The song was Runaway Train. The year was 1993. I'm Dave Perner of Soul Asylum, and these are the sounds of the time. Growing up in Minneapolis in the 60s and 70s, music was always a priority for Perner. His first band would lead him to joining his next band with a couple of friends from the Minneapolis music scene. I started out playing drums in this particular trio, and eventually we found another drummer and I moved to the front. I was fronting a band and writing the material. It was very punk rock, it was very DIY, not spandex, and whatever the the hair metal bands were doing, we were kind of trying to be on the opposite side of that spectrum. Their name, Loud Fast Rules, spoke for itself. It was just punk rock. At the time, I think that the hardcore thing was just starting, and it was pretty synonymous amongst bands that were playing really aggressive music. And I just one day came into practice with a new song and I went, here's the concept, we're gonna play this as fast as we possibly can. So things just got faster and faster and faster until it was like just this blur of noise. We prided ourselves on being the loudest, but uh, that was kind of the aesthetic, was just to be as aggressive as possible. Minneapolis had this great sort of free form of performance art. The singer didn't have to necessarily be a great singer, but you had to really bring the chaos somehow. So there was a lot of experimental kind of punk bands at the time, and uh, I felt like we fit right in. After a while, Perner says he began rejecting the band's punk sound, and in 1983, they changed their name to Soul Asylum. It just became so full of rules and more about the fashion and the look of the band and all that sort of stuff that, yeah, I was kind of, I was rebelling against my own music. After dropping album after album with little commercial success, the band began to experiment with a new sound in the early 1990s. I was really listening to a lot of folk music. I'd gotten into Dylan and Leonard Cohen and the Weavers and Pete Seeger and Woody Guthrie. It seemed like thematically it was related, you know, music for the people, by the people or whatever. But it was time for me to sort of stand back and try to figure out what, where I was going and what I was doing. And at that point I said, well, maybe I'll Maybe I'll try this acoustic guitar. Perner had a new vision for Soul Asylum. There was kind of this aesthetic to do the opposite of everything and to try to challenge all the other music that was out there. And for me, it finally came full circle. It was like, now I'm going to try to do the softest, slowest thing and after doing the fastest, loudest thing for all these years. The brand of music would become known as alternative rock, and when Soul Asylum released its sixth album, Grave Dancers Union in 1992, their first single, Somebody to Shove, got plenty of play thanks to MTV. So when we started getting all kinds of outside attention. The album went triple platinum with the help of another single, Black Gold About the Gulf War. But it was a song, Runaway Train, that helped catapult Soul Asylum to international stardom. I had had the melody in my head for the better part of a year, and I didn't really have words. I was experiencing my first, uh, for, what is that, foray into what ended up being called clinical depression. So I was, I was a sad boy, and uh, that kind of, is what went into the song as far as a runaway train being like a spiral of emotion that you can't control that is a downward spiral in this particular case. I wasn't fighting back anymore. I was just stuck in a loop or something. And uh, I think that's where the song comes from.
The song hit number five on Billboard and later earned the band a Grammy for Best Rock Song. Still get people coming up to me and talking to me about how that song got them through some hard times or whatever the case may be. People had this other layer that they found in that song to be something that I'm sure made them think, oh, I'm not the only one, I guess. Probably every time I sing it, there's a little bit of a, I got, I got past it somehow, you know? <laughs> um, but it's still, uh, you know, it's still, still going. So you have to be kind of, you know, you learn, you live and you learn. After a hiatus in the 90s, where Perner moved to New Orleans and even released a solo album, the band reunited, despite losing fellow bandmate and friend Carl Mueller to cancer. In 2005, Soul Asylum got back to doing what it did best, making more music, as long as it's never the same. I'm always trying to go in a different direction every time I write a song, it should be different. When I started out, I had no idea where we were going or what I was doing, and uh, it seems like a, you know, a progression.